Hello again. The last few videos I've made have been a bit more intense as we've tried to show a complete workflow and how to use Alteryx to arrive at a solution from a source piece of data. Next couple of videos I believe are going to be a bit shorter as we look at something specifically has been solved and looked at and a problem and questions from Alteryx users that I've worked with over the past. Hopefully this highlights how you can slowly embed yourself into Alteryx and get Alteryx to do all the data blending and cleansing and manipulation that you need. So let's take a look at one of the vexing problems that you have with data no matter what its source is or no matter what the tool is that you're using and that is how to get the interval either in days, months, or years between two dates. For business planning and reporting, having this knowledge is very important. Things like how long was a piece of equipment in your repair depot? How soon after someone saw the doctor do they have to be hospitalized? And other beginning and ending calculations that can help drive your business in making some decisions. Where this usually starts is with a piece of SQL. In my case, we're using a MySQL database and I can create a select statement that goes ahead and creates intervals between two dates. For the Daisy Hill puppy, we're going to look at how long the interval was between when the puppy was first born and when they were registered for their first trick class. And by joining the puppy dimension and the trick registration fact table, we can calculate the time in days, months, or years from when they were first known to Puppy Hill and when they first attended a class. And as you can see, all of your SQL RDBMSs have a number of functions that can help you. The problem that you run into is that every SQL instantiations through an RDBMS has its own set of functions and you have to learn what those functions are, how they work, how you can get them to use to get the answer that you need. If you always live in one RDBMS, it becomes a very easy crutch to understand how that one works and which functions are there. But if you're switching between RDBMSs, because every organization has a number of different RDBMS platforms for their data, you begin to run into confusion, trying to figure out where you've kept that note that tells you which function is the best one to use and which of the RDBMSs. In this case, even on MySQL, you have two different functions that give you the date ranges. We can use the date diff function, giving it the second date and then the first date. And this will return you the number of days between those two dates. You also have timestamp diff that takes as its first perimeter the interval measurement, day, month, or year, and then takes the first date and then the second date as parameters and returns you the answers that you need. The number of days between birth and registration, the number of months, and the number of years. What a lot of people will do is because they're very happy with this solution is they will get this query working, copy it out, and then use it in their Alteryx workflow. Now there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. I will not begin to say that there is. And the way I would do that is I would connect to the, my MySQL database. When it pops up the SQL editor, I would just paste the code that I know works into here, test the query, click in OK, drop a browser on the end of this, run it, 
you can see in here that it translated the alias, came out with an answer for me, and presented that data the same. But what happens is now I'm dependent upon the RDBMS to do my work for me and simply return my data so that I can then manipulate it or restore it somewhere else. This is the way I started using Ultrix originally, and I slowly migrated out of that when I understand that there are a lot of functionality and features and functions that are available to me in Ultrix. And if I learned them in Ultrix, I didn't have to remember them from RDBMS to RDBMS. So to repeat that same process requires additional widgets to use, but it's really not a very hard process. So I connect to my database, and what I want to put in here is the Daisy Hill dot puppy dim test my query. It's good. A couple of things I will change over here in the configuration when I do this. Caching the data is great for your development work. What this means is that once I've run this widget through the workflow, it will store the data locally, and then it doesn't have to retrieve that data from the RDBMS as I continue my development work. This can save a lot of time so I have a large data set. I also like to say none. I'm a big proponent of good names of tables and objects. A lot of times if you put double quotes around the names of objects, tables, views, columns, you can get away with bad naming conventions, which makes it harder for someone else when they come into the future. We have a negative choice here. It says, do not show the percent complete. I like to see the percent complete, especially when I'm dealing with a large data set. By default, it does not show that percent complete. I turn that off. What it'll do is it'll run a quick little query into the database just to get the number of records, and then go ahead and from there begin to run the real query. It's a pretty nice feature. I like seeing it. Rounding this out, obviously, we'll put a select on here. When I drop the select in here, you will notice that it has already looked at the table that is in the RDBMS and has determined what the table objects or table columns are and their data types. In this case, all that I really need is the WID, which I'm going to go ahead and call Puppy WID. I do not need the puppy name or the batch timestamp. Now when I run this, it's very quick, not very many records in here. And you'll notice that there is now this little window pane put around my input widget, and this indicates that the data has been cached. If I click on it, it warns me that if I make any changes, the cache will be cleared. So it's two ways of seeing that my data has indeed, be ca indeed been cached. And then when I run this query again, it'll read it locally rather than reading it off of my RDBMS. I repeat that operation for my second table. Clicking on the saved connection. It's the Daisy Hill puppy trick. Registration, back table, test to make sure I spelt that right. It's good. I click OK. Repeat the same couple of steps up here. Cache the data. No quoted. Show me the percent complete. I also have this refresh button, which will give me 100 records just so I can look at the data. Run a quick query, look at the data. I'll drag my, drop my select into here as well. And in this case, there's a number of attributes here. I'm going to choose the option up here. Select, deselect all. Turns everything off, so I can just turn on the ones that I want, which is only two. A little bit quicker way of doing that. Run my query. My data has been retrieved. One thing I didn't do is by default, all these are date times. I like just to see dates, so I can change that here. Change that here, even though I don't have any time component. Running this cleans it up to look a little bit better. Registration date, birth date. 
So we're ready to go ahead and join these. Again, the join is slightly different in Altrix than it is in the SQL language. While it has the left, the right, and the inner components, they are separated out through the query. And it's up to you to decide whether you want the left, right, or inner join of these. Join on puppy wid. Going through both. You see the name is slightly different. Not nice having typos. We'll click it there. We'll see that's missing over here in red. Yeah, we got everything lines up pretty good. In this case, as output, we do not need the second WID. So I will turn that off here. I will have the puppy's WID, birthday, and registration as my solution. Go ahead and drop a select into the join. Drop a browse onto the end of this so we can begin to play in the middle. Drag it way over here. Gives us room. We can now run this. Looking here, data types are good. The order is good. And then here's my distribution and solution and data profiling of these. So I want to go ahead and calculate the interval between the birth date and the registration date to repeat what we're doing within the SQL from the RDBMS. And we'll do that with a formula. Drop that here in the middle. Remembering that it's nice to have very short annotations. So we're going to go ahead and create a custom one very quickly. Calc intervals. Go back to the configuration. We're going to create a new column. Add a column. Let's call this days before registration. Change that to an integer. And just say as we type in slowly the date name, it brings up all the date function. You see that there is a date difference. Date 1 subtracts the second argument from the first, so it gives us a good recognition of what it's going to do, so we know how to populate the parameters. So it says the second argument from the first, so the second one will be birth date, and the first one will be registration date. And the first one here will be birth date. And we'll do it first in days, putting single quotes or double quotes around it, day or days. Let's run this very quickly. Take a look at the results before we go further. And we can see that we have the days before registration, which matches up with our SQL query. Let's go ahead and finish this out by getting months and years. I want to go ahead and choose another new column. Second column is going to be months before registration. Create that as an integer. One of the nice features, in case you haven't seen these icons over here and use them, these help you pick a function, these help you pick a column or constraint. This shows you recent or saved expressions, and this actually saves an expression if you're happy with it and want to reuse it. I've been working on this, so you can see I have all the choices here, but what I did to get these is I went ahead and simply chose my first one and then replaced days with months. And went ahead and added my final calculation, which is years before registration. Creating that as an integer 32. Take the months, change that to years. Put a select on the end of it so I make sure my data types look good. Drag my browse in a little bit because this is where we're going to finish. I now run it. I can look at the data and see that I have days before months before and years before. Clicking here very quickly shows me that the max was 4, the min was 2. If you remember how we created this data, that makes sense. Data types I can look up here. I can also go back into my Browse widget, click on Metadata. 
it shows me the data types for each of the fields also shows me the source that it came from and also remember so this was the primary key of the data coming in so this gives me a nice data set that I can use to do any kind of calculations and reporting any kind of predictive analytics things like that all would be much easier now that I have the days months or years between these two dates hope this helps please subscribe drop me any comments if you have questions want to see something else slightly different and have a problem that you're working with would like to see an answer otherwise have a great day